I've watched a lot of horror movies over the last few years, and there is no way in hell I'm going back and doing all the research. But I really feel like a lot of these f open up on trees or some sort of nature-fied nonsense. Is it a sin? Maybe not. Does it get on my nerves? Absolutely. My wild Irish rose. Rose singing a song with roses in the lyrics while picking a flower and about to talk to a girl named Violet. Heavy-handed much? You're wondering why I'm wearing such a funny hat. Actually, I'm wondering why you're not at rehearsal with the three other non-blondes. Also, A, that's a perfectly normal looking hat. And B, I get the impression Rose just mentions it every time because she wants to share this anecdote no matter if a question about the hat was asked or not. And that's annoying, and therefore sinful. My friends, my very, very best friends, they just call me Rose the Hat. Why does Rose have to go through all this subterfuge with the girl? Can't they just attack her and be done with it? Why is she acting like the reverse Pennywise, wanting the kid all happy before she vapes her? When we know that's not how it works. Stay a while. See more magic. When they kill the kid from room, they take him way the hell out to the middle of nowhere. But here, they're off in this girl in a fairly well-populated campground. What if someone happens upon their location? Have you met people that camp out in RVs? They're not what you would like to call the most rational cohort. The Shining 2, even shinier! <laughs> What kind of mom to a super traumatized kid comes up behind them like this with no warning in the middle of the night? No Danny or you okay doc to give him a heads up? I want you to know this box inside and out. Don't just look at it, touch it. Huh, my extremely detail-oriented college girlfriend said this exact same thing on our third date. Also, I'm still not sure how this dick hollering ghost works, but I really don't understand how it can physically manifest anything for Danny to explore. $24.99 for a small toad? In 1980? With inflation, that would be like $78 today. Does this toad have a golden cloaca? If these ghosts can still get to Danny, then why is this one just hanging out in the bathtub waiting for him? Why not just attack him while he's sleeping or at any other time? Also, why does Danny keep getting the old busted corpse version of the bath lady? I guess this is her true form or whatever, but Daddy Jack at least got a good 90 seconds or so of the super hot model in the last movie. Jeez, just a couple of instructions from Ghost Dick and Danny's able to lock this ghoul up on his first try within like seconds. I know he's a good shiner and all, but you'd think it would take at least a couple of minutes and a few practice swings. Older version of a character we saw in a previous movie now has a beard cliche. You staying here or going somewhere? Don't you want to watch the movie? Dear holy but Jesus, she's a killer and he's a child molester. Every Stephen King adaptation has to have the bare minimum of characters to root for. Hell, even Danny's kind of a dick up to this point. I don't see what the fuss is about. Chat room romance, a little gross, not interesting. Talking at the movies. You want to let me go? No, oh, no, sweetie. No, I don't. I don't understand why Snakebite's powers don't work on Rose and the movie doesn't do a damn thing to try and explain it. And yeah, yeah, you can tell me it's magic and and I'll gladly tell you to magic the fuck off. Does anyone know a magic word? Discount bearded Brendan Yuri. Abracadabra. Not only is Abra clearly a show off, she also just ruined the f kitchen, just to prove a point. So the spoons falling was the event that caused a disturbance in the shine? Wouldn't Abra need more shiny to keep them up there? Also, if Danny and Rose can feel Abra's abilities, then how has Rose never felt and or gone after Danny? Dick said earlier that Danny is the equivalent of an 11 million watt battery, and we know Rose was close by in 1980. He had ghosts from Colorado tracking him down in Florida, so Rose should have sensed him easily. She even later questions how this happened, and I could not agree more. Springtime of your womanhood, isn't it? Hmm. You're not a girl anymore, but you don't have a single dent yet, either. She's not a girl, not yet a pusher. I'm sorry, I was just That's okay. People love to look at it. This is typically not what you would want to hear from a random stranger in a city park. You sure you want to vouch for this pup? Pretty sure. It's your ass, Billy. What's up with Mrs. Furley here? Sure, he could use a shower and a shave, but it's not like Danny immediately looks like bad news. This is just as bad as Brian Dennehy's overreaction to Rambo coming to town in first blood. Unless you're a small person or specifically making sure your d looks good every morning, how is this mirror functional for your average adult? You ready? She's ready. 80% of these assholes' jobs is apparently to sneak up on victims and creepily stand in a semicircle. Shotgunning the essence of a little magic girl. Yep, it's as funky as it sounds. Anybody here a newbie? Since this movie isn't all that political, Bruce Greenwood only agreed to be cast if he could play the president of AA. How did you know? 
I wish I could say. Dr. JFK goes on to offer Danny a job just because he magically knew the location of his watch. But what the hell does one thing have to do with the other? This is the first and perhaps the sneakiest direct reference to The Shining, and I have to give the movie credit for this level of detail. The color of the office, the position of the desk, Danny's even sitting in the exact spot Jack was when he was talking to Ullman in the original film. My nostalgia boner's gonna force me to remove a sin, damn it. Do dying people bother you? No. We're all dying. The world is one big hospice with fresh air. Danny has the cockeyed pessimism and philosophical outlook of the gothiest kid in my freshman theology course. I believe his name was Eternal Pain. Wait, they eat regular sh too? I thought they lived off sucking the souls out of shiny kids. They also need burgers for nutrition? Hey, let it be. Cats. Hard to sleep. Roll crook. So nothing important happened over eight years, Shining-wise? Abra basically showed herself to be one of the most powerful forces in the world, but she's sailed through her tween years without a major incident? Guess I don't need to ask why you're here this hour. Man, if Dan's got this type of reputation at the hospice, why doesn't everyone run the opposite way as soon as he starts a shift? In a minute, little pen pal. How long, though? All eight years? Did he investigate what happened back in 2011 when a magic message appeared on his wall? Seriously, this flash forward has me all f***ed up. Are the canisters low? Of course not. There's no need to waste one if you're close to the kill. Yeah, but wouldn't this be the exact time to feast on a canister? If you're close to a kill, that means you'll be filling one up soon, right? There's less steam out there in this week or two. I don't know if it's their cell phones or diets or their Netflix or what, but... The streaming wars overtook the steaming wars and no one saw it coming. You know, it sure does seem like some of the steam would evaporate before they could inhale it, right? Like, shouldn't they set up a hookah-type situation where they can all take a direct hit off this sh He hits the ball every time. Like he can read the pitcher's mind. Wait, even if Brad can read the pitcher's mind, it's not like the ball's gonna go that way every time they want it to. Have you ever seen the crazy pitches at a Little League game? Also, this scene was clearly written after the screenwriter toured the technological facilities of the Houston Astros. <laughs> what the hell? Brad has to walk down the highway adjacent to a goddamn cornfield to get home after every game? He seriously couldn't get a ride with one of the team parents? Look at the wide shot of the road! You can't even see the baseball field! How has he not been abducted by evil soul suckers before now? It's okay. We're friends. I'll take you right home. You can take me right home. Well, why not just start with this tactic instead of having not Tom Waits try and coax him into the van with his creepy Stranger Danger vibes? Please let me go! Gah, this scene is disturbing as there's more brutal child murder in this movie than in the entire Harry Potter series combined, and that's saying something. See, this callback to the original movie seems forced. Why would Abra write the backwards R like this? She's not five years old anymore. Also, good luck explaining to the no parties, music, or noise landlady about those cracks in the wall. Hey, I thought Rama already did that a few years ago in the raid too. I know that head of yours is like a radio sometimes, and. You pick up some weird stations. I'm sorry, Mom, but being a kind and understanding parent is formally disallowed in a Stephen King adaptation. For that reason, we'll have to eventually kill your husband. It's in the handbook and everything. Yeah, that won't raise any red flags on the next school internet sweep. Also, how did she even get to this site? There's no web address in the browser. It doesn't even appear to be a browser. How's the book? Good. Of course this character's writing a book. This is a Stephen King adaptation, after all. It's odd that the missing person's write-up on Bradley was that he was last seen in Bankerton, Iowa. When we were shown at the game, it was Adair, Iowa. Movie doesn't know how to location subtitle correctly. Abra's taking so long to shine locate Brad's corpse that it would have been quicker if she literally drove to f***ing Iowa. Jesus. When did The Shining start causing nosebleeds? Seriously, it's weird that Stranger Things totally ripped off Stephen King material and now Stephen King material is starting to rip off Stranger Things. When will the cycle of madness end? I kept saying, please help me, Tony. Oh. Well, I'm sorry about that. And that's it. No one sends Dan to a hospital after he dropped to the ground unconscious and began bleeding from his nose. Do they want him to walk it off or rub some dirt on it? I'd believe that a 13-year-old could somehow get a commercial bus ticket during school hours in, like, 1975. But this is the modern day, man. Ain't nobody selling that girl a ticket out of town without calling her parents. Also, I guess it's a good thing that Abra and Dan lived close enough to each other that she could get there and back within the length of a single day. When I was a kid, I didn't understand The Shining. Yeah, me neither. I thought it was just about a dude with an axe that threw a ball against the wall all day, and that The Simpsons made fun of it. Keep your head down. Stay safe. I'm sorry. Character says they're definitely not going to help when it's a certainty that they will eventually help, cliche. This electric pencil sharpener is tripping me out, man. Why would a hospice place need a pencil sharpener? Shouldn't everything written in this place be done in pen? Hang on, Doc. Dick. 
Dick, say hello to Doc. Doc, Dick. You won't see me again, Doc. Um, why? Does Dick really have better things to do? Seems like this mission to take out the true knot is pretty f important, and he's got some decent inside info that could be extremely useful. I don't know why I'm picking this scene of Rose doing the astral projection thing to take a sin off for Rebecca Ferguson's electric performance in this movie, because I could do it at so many places, but I'm doing it now and no one can stop me. She f rules in this movie. Having said that, the f is this astral projection? We've seen the shining used to get into other people's heads, but why would Rose need to do this woman of steel bull to get to Abra's place in New Hampshire? They killed an ape from Lil Brad like two nights ago, and the grandpa guy got plenty of that powerful so why is he croaking out so quickly afterward? I know he's old, but that was hella recent. So no, you're not scared. You're a king and you eat fear. This scene is super sad, but it's also making me sad about the death of a child killer, so you, movie. And thus begins the second half of this movie's obsession with driving. Cliff Booth even thinks there's too much driving in this movie. When I was a kid, Younger than you, I, I bumped into something like these things. The movie feels the need to have a refresher course on past events a little over halfway through. Just in case you weren't paying attention or didn't realize this still has a f hour left to go. She says to pull her arm back. And I'll tell you when to stop. She'll tell us when to stop. I know Billy's a good dude and probably has a little bit of shine too, but any friend that wakes you up at 4 a.m. and asks you to drive to f Iowa because he's got a little girl as a friend in his head guiding him to a different little kid's dead body is going to get a full psych evaluation before I get in that car. I'm sorry. You used to hunt. I ever tell you that? No. Magical skip. What did you catch them to? I'm sure they called the authorities to alert them to Brad's location, but how did that conversation go? Um, officer, I received a magical transmission that one of your young residents was brutally tortured and murdered by a pack of wild ghost vampires, and then I found his exact location and partially dug him up. Okay, bye. Rose will go through them to get to you. You know that, don't you? She'll cut them down without a second thought. We know this, and maybe Amber knows this because she's been in Rose's head, but why is Dan so goddamn certain about Rose's motivation and strategy? He's got some experience with magic stuff, but it's not like she's behaving at all like the ghouls at the Overlook. Hell, he's never even seen her. Those people have been around a long, long time, sir. They're rich, connected. I, I don't think they're worried about the police. Here goes Dan again, dropping knowledge about the true knot, like he just scanned their Wikipedia page on the drive over here. Also, you mother are about to get into a gunfight with the assholes from True Knot. You don't think having a trained police presence would help tip the scales in your favor? <laughs> I know we as an audience need to be faked out, but is there any practical reason Dan has to open the f car door for Abra's astral projection? I mean, given the way things eventually play out, shouldn't he be reaching back there for a stuffed bunny? Good friends. The way they talked you up, I was thinking it'd be a little harder than that. Well, it will be harder, but the good news is that the bunny is going to be high as for the next 12 hours or so. Also, so now Abra can teleport an image of herself that everyone else can see? Where the f did this power come from? In The Shining, Danny could see ghosts and talk with his mind. In this film, they're just adding whatever the f they want when it's necessary to move the story along. The magical battle between good and evil forces devolves into a mother episode of 24. I guess I could buy that Billy's a crack shot due to his hunting days, even though he's got to be rusty. But Dan's also a sharpshooter. Do we even know if he's ever used a gun in his life? You're sleepy. Billy eventually does save the day before getting himself killed. But the f is taking him so long, he's locked and loaded and was right there with Dan. Man. Well, good thing Snape might decided to curse Danny out for a second instead of pulling the trigger immediately. You've been dose missing more than I've ever used before. Might let you wake up here and there, but that steam of yours is fast asleep. Wow, I didn't realize the True Knot had this level of steam control. They must have all previously worked at dry cleaners. Man, dead bodies just keep piling up around Dan, eh? Did he even do anything with Billy's body back at the campground? Is he gonna give Abra's mom a heads up? Maybe leave a note saying Abra's taken by steampunk vampires and your hubby's dead? The milk in the fridge is still good, though, XO? Help me, please, Tony. This movie is legitimately great for the first couple hours. The themes of trauma, addiction, recovery, and family ring perfectly through the screenplay. Well, it's still just an entertaining story. I'll get to my beef with the last 30 minutes or so soon, but I just wanted to praise the vast majority of this film before I started pissing all over it again. I'm the guy that killed your friends. Neat trick. Haven't seen this one before. No kidding. The Shining in this movie has officially become just as nebulous as the Force in The Last Jedi. Does Ryan Johnson have a writing credit here? All right. Rose is loganing herself up on Kitty Steam so hard here that I'm half expecting her to fight X-24 in a few scenes. Where are we? Ohio. I mean, even if she was partially drugged, Dan could have at least discussed the plan with Abra before they got all the f***ing way to Ohio, right? Where are we going? 
Colorado. Why Colorado? Why indeed? This movie had so much momentum and it was setting up an awesome showdown between these two and Rose the Hat. But the movie has to throw in a bunch of references to the original Shining at the end for some reason. And look, I f***ing love the Shining. This should be right up my alley. But it's just super awkwardly done in this movie. I don't think we can beat her. Not by ourselves. But Abra's kicked Rose's ass by herself twice already. And the rest of her crew is dead. Why in the ever-loving f*** would Dan think this? Well, if it's dangerous for people like us, I expect it's dangerous for people like her. I'm sorry to keep harping on this plan, but mother this plan. We know that Rose is different than Abra and Dan. She's evil, my dude. The ghosts at the Overlook are more likely to come out and shake her hand all friendly style like that one fake battle in Braveheart. Oh, thank God. Abra, are you okay? Where are you? I love you. Abra is a massive dick to her mom. F me, man. I think the movie The Road had less footage of roads. I have to wake it up. Dan sure knows exactly what he's supposed to do, doesn't he? How does he know he can't wake it up from the outside? Hell, he could even use Abra's help, right? It's not like physical presence has been all that important in this movie. I guess I won't be needing this anymore. Jeez, the light turns on so loudly, I bet it's why the place eventually shut down. Hang on, we pointed this out in our video for The Shining. Jack eventually put the axe through both upper panels in the door. Even though the famous Here's Johnny shot shows only one. But we've had 39 years to correct that, right? Why didn't we? Oh, I'm sure it's something like yada yada yada, magic hotels and stuff, but I want real answers, damn it. This movie went from a super interesting and unnerving horror film to the equivalent of a greatest hits album from a band that only had two or three good songs. The drink takes a drink, and then the drink takes a man. Ain't it so dead? This is a very good scene and a really annoying part of the movie. If Jack Lloyd didn't look like Discount David Harbour, I'd consider giving a sin back. Alas, my hands are tied. Also, how is Jack Lloyd still there? Shouldn't he also be in a mind coffin if he's an overlooked ghost? This movie is built on a jack of all lies. You know, that was a long ass drive from New York to Colorado. Shouldn't Rose have brought some steam canisters with her and huffed them right before the showdown? It has to have worn off at least a little, right? That's at least a 24 hour drive. <sighs> I'm starting to think Ready Player One did a better job paying homage to The Shining. This just has no life to it. It's like some bored 20-something giving a museum tour for the eighth time that day. I don't care if it's been locked in a case, it's been nearly 40 goddamn years. Ain't no way that axe is that clean and shiny. You're gonna die here. Hmm. Brave words, dear. The build-up to this pseudo-fight is interminable. Can someone just freeze to death already? I'm not faulting Rebecca Ferguson's performance here, which is almost note for note what Jack Nicholson did with Shelley Duvall up the stairs. I just can't shake the feeling that I'm seeing some cosplay here. Very talented cosplay, but still. What's in those? Something special, huh? They're not special. They're starving. Why is this also part of his plan? Getting his femoral artery severed along with Rose overtaking him so she could get curious about the boxes? This is a bad plan, man. This is an even worse idea than insulting Pennywise to death in It Chapter 2. Boy, Abra really bounced, didn't she? I mean, I know Dan told her to run, but has she run from a fight at all in this movie? Seems like she would at least stick around to see what happened between Dan and Rose, rather than randomly wandering the halls of the Overlook, don't you think? I'm honestly starting to think this is the only room in the hotel. I can't hold her off for much longer, Abra. You need to run. No. I'm not going anywhere without you. The f kind of plan is this? What's Abra gonna do? Call a f lift to pick her up? She's 13 years old, stranded on a snowy mountaintop. And yeah, the emergency vehicles do show up, but how did he know they'd make it up here? <laughs> what? This movie has lost its mind. The fire spread fast, destroying the hotel. Sudden end of movie aberration. In a minute. Wait, the overlooked ghosts are still out and about? What was the point of burning down the hotel then? Doc? You can put her money back, Doc. Me. Doc. Me. Hey, Doc. Me. Doc? Me. And you, Doc? Me. You're a strange type of doctor. Me. Up to sleep. Me. Thank you, Doc. Doc? Me. Hang on, Doc. Me. Car's a wheel, Doc. Me. Hell, Doc me. won't see me again, Doc. Me. I thought we were having steamed clams. No, no, I said steamed hams. Make sure you click that bell icon. <clears throat> Sellouts. But clicking the little bell icon is how you make sure you get notified every time we release a video. So click it. <clears throat> Sellouts. Well, hi there. Are you lost, sweetheart? Are you afraid, honey? New Jersey! <laughs> has, has anyone seen my spoons? There is no spoon. Abracadabra, Holmes. I'm the magic man now. Oh, I got a stage five clinger. I think I see blue. He 
looks glorious. Come walk What we've got here is failure to communicate. And they trembled in their villages and beds and skyscrapers. And carp and anchovies and orangutans and breakfast cereals and fruit bats. I need your help. Whose car are we gonna take? But this head movie makes my eyes rain. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood.